Thank you for tuning in to The Richard Brown Show on WCOM LP, Chapel Hill and Carborough, 103.5 FM. I am Richard Brown and I want to thank you for joining me today. Before we get started with our guest, I want to take a second and just kind of share with you what The Richard Brown Show is all about. This show is a space where African Americans can enjoy, can experience and expand the positive things that are happening in our community. In my mind, far too often, the things that you hear about African Americans are negative and people are really doing things that I believe are not helping the community. So this space right here was created to highlight those things within the community that are positive. The people that are doing things that are helping the community, that are uh, pushing the community forward and showing the community that yes indeed, uh, we can do great and wonderful things. Uh, my guest today is uh, a very excellent example of that. I want to thank him for coming in, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, Atreus, uh, I want to thank you for coming in. Why don't you share with everyone the work that you do in the community, specifically with the children, and then we'll talk a little bit about your your personal life and why you did that. Okay, Richard, mm -hmm. thank you for having me today. Mm -hmm. I founded an organization called Movement of Youth, and it is an educational and mentoring program for high school students in the Durham Public School System. We do three things. We enrich, we engage, and we empower. The enrichment comes through Saturday Academy sessions, which occur twice a month, that really help to expose students to things that will help to build their 21st century skills. So we've done hip-hop symposiums where they understand the history of hip-hop, We've done business professionalism session, sessions where they understand what they need to do when they're in a professional setting. We've had golf sessions where they learn how to play on the golf course. So that's the enrichment, really helping them to develop those 21st century skills. The engagement comes through one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And so students that get engaged with our programming are matched up with mentors that attend either UNC or Duke University. And so they are given access to a college scholar that can really help them to navigate through the college application process, apply for scholarships, but most importantly, gives them that person to help hold them accountable so they can reach their long-term goals and aspirations. And the empowerment comes through community outreach initiatives. I think that's the most important part of the program when I think about it. A quote that comes to mind when I think about empowerment is service is the rent you pay for the space you occupy. Mm -hmm. And that's by the late great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so through, that, through those empowerment issues that we tackle, we allow our students to become instruments of change in society. So again, we enrich, we engage, and we empower. And this is all to help our students get to higher education. Understood. So now, of those three things, how did you happen upon them as it relates to working with the students? Would be my first question to you. And, and you've kind of already answered my next question is, you know, out of the three, which one are you really, really excited about? You mm -hmm. know, when you work with the students and you see that they get it. Right. I think these were three critical issues that I focused on because I understand the importance of effective mentoring and also how getting exposed to different activities can help to broaden your horizons. When I was growing up in Charlotte, I got connected with a program through the Greater Charlotte chapter of the 100 Black Men of America that matched me up with a mentor that helped me to be successful and really showed me the importance of service. And by being exposed to their Saturday Academy sessions, I was able to broaden my scope so I could fully understand what was available to me and how I could take advantage of that. And so when I graduated from high school, the 100 gave me a scholarship so that I could attend college and that made me the first in my family to go to college. Let me stop you right there. When you were in that program, I personally have been in mentor type programs and remember instances that really got me to start to expand what it is that I thought I could do. Could you share an uh, instant like that, an instance like that in your own life where you were talking to your mentor and, and they just kind of gave you, instilled in you that moment and said, you can do this. My mentor is a person that has a lot of positive things going on, 
but he's very humble about it. And I think just by watching him and how he interacts with people, it really resonated with me that he was truly about making sure that other people were going to be able to be successful. And I think that we have all been called to serve other people and to really look at how can we start to sow seeds so that we can prepare other people to be able to take advantage of that harvest. And that's what my mentor did with me. He spent a lot of time with me showing me what I had available but he also instilled in me the importance of making sure that when I get to where I want to go, I'm helping other people to grow and to develop as well. And so I, I can really say that my mentor is a person that cares about the needs of other people first, in so much that it helps to meet his own needs as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were there certain activities that you all did together that you just recall, whether it be meeting other people or doing s certain service uh, aspects that you know when you walked away from that you was like you were, I could imagine you felt like this is what I want to do I would really say just the informal time that we spent together I remember when the Charlotte Hornets used to be in Charlotte he took me mm. to a couple of Charlotte Hornets games right, which right. was a lot of fun got to go see those spending time with his family spending time with his children actually played basketball with his son okay. so getting to do things of that nature I think those informal bonding times really help you to see a person for who they truly are versus being in a professional setting where you feel you have to act a certain way and so I think that when we were in those informal environments I was able to see him for who he was as a person and it really revealed that humanity that was in him and so I could connect with that. Mm -hmm. Now when you played basketball, uh, what position did you play? I was a shooting guard. A shooting guard? That's so right. Two guard. That's oh, okay. right, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you were two guard mm -hmm. and his son played what position? His son was a power forward actually. He was a power forward. Mm -hmm. Now did you ever play with him? With his son? No, your mentor. I didn't play with my mentor, but I'm pretty sure I take him to the hole. Oh, you take? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. In the program I was in, Upper Bound, we mm -hmm. played basketball with the with the guys. Okay. And uh, and it was, you know, it that was like our highlight. If we could actually get in and mm -hmm. actually score a point on them, that yeah. was, you know. Um, but it's in those moments that you build the bond. Right. And that bond is the one that you lean on as you have questions and things like that. Right. Talk a little bit about when you had questions or when you were searching for how is it that I'm going to implement the things that he's talking about and when you went to him what, what was some of the advice that he gave you? It really took some searching to figure out how I wanted to make an impact mm -hmm. and so when I got to UNC I started thinking about particular things I could do to make a difference. And so I slowly got involved on campus. I was in an acapella singing group. I was in the black student movement at UNC that really helped to begin to expand and expose me to those things where I can start to make an impact. Mm -hmm. After a while, I knew that I wanted to start a mentoring program. And so I began doing research and found out that Hillside High School in Durham was under a lot of scrutiny just because of the performance yes. that their students yes. were having. And I knew that that might be a place where I could make a difference. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my fraternity brothers was working at Hillside at the time and was telling me about some of the issues. And so I started doing research with a couple of my friends on campus mm -hmm. around figuring out how to implement a program that might be able to counteract some of the negative things that were going on in the community, especially with black males, because at that point, and we've heard this before, you had more black males that were behind bars mm -hmm. than were on college campuses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, I went to an event last night where I found that that's not the case anymore, but the numbers are still close, and so we can't get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to have a program that would really start to unlock the hidden genius in some of these young men. And so we started going on Hillside's campus and identifying students that we thought would be a good fit for the program. What year was this that, that, that you were actually doing the kind of exploratory research? 2004 and 2005. Okay. And then we started the program in 2006. Mm -hmm. So it gave me a few years just to sit back and look at what the issues were in the marketplace and how we could address those.